Hello, welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Um, today's uh, crossword puzzle is a very unusual puzzle, so I'm going to see if Mark wants to have a try and um, look at that uh, on another day. Um, it's For those of you who haven't looked at it, the online edition is a puzzle from 1965 and a fairly extraordinary one at that. So it'd be very interesting to see him have a go at that. So what I thought I might do today is look at Sudoku. Um, so, as usual, what we should be doing is just uh, going through the grid where we find um, squares in a 3x3 three three box, like this one, where a number can only go in exactly two positions within the 3x3 three three box. We should make little pencil notes like this. You see the 4, 4 here, and this 4 here means we can isolate where the 4s can go. We can do it over here with the 4s as well. Um, and we should go through the puzzle now and just try and fill in what we can using this method. So you can see here there's an interesting arrangement in the center going on where we have a six and a five in the central column and this pattern in the middle which means we can actually lock the five and the six into these outside squares in columns four and column six uh, which means two three eight has to come down the middle here can put the twos in and the eights in, but we can't do anything with the threes yet because there's no three here and no three here. So we just have to remember there's a three in this central column um, while we're uh, solving. So we can use the five and the six to make a couple more pencil marks there and there. Uh, can we use the six? Not quite yet. Um, okay. Oh, we can actually place an 8 down here in this square. Pencil mark 8 over there. Pencil mark 2 is up here. So, naked 5 up here. You can see this 5 and this 5 crossing the box, which allows us to make a few more pencil marks. Always make pencil marks whenever you can the name of the game at this stage of the puzzle. And fours here, which allows us to isolate which of these fours is the correct one. It must be this one. Make this four. You can see now we have a lot of numbers in the uh, right hand column of the grid. Um, so one, five and seven to be placed. And you can see quite quickly I think there's a 7 here and a 7 here so we can't place a 7 in either of these two positions the only place left for a 7 now in column 9 is here I don't think there's anything particularly clever about that deduction it's just, I mean that's a very natural thing to check once you get a, a lot of digits in a particular row column or 3 by 3 set of squares um, so now this square has to be a 1 5 combination as does this one now, there's a choice here in terms of, I think, what you might do as your next step. One thing you might do is, knowing that this square is very restricted, you may scan this row and this row. Because although you only have four digits in row three, this is not, it's not quite as good as a fifth digit, but it's like a fifth digit because it's so restricted. So. You can see one, two, three, five, six are the options here. Um, now remembering there's a three in here, so this square is very interesting. We'll come back to it. Uh, and in fact, yeah, I think this is the square we need to look at. So remember, we we had just had to recall there was a three in this set of squares here. So in fact, there's a naked one here now. We can we can actually place the one. It's the only digit left that can go into this square allows us to make another couple of pencil marks down here. Um, so, and remembering now this square had to be a 1 or a 5, so we can now resolve that, place the 5 in this 3x3 three three box, place the 1 here. And that's all good stuff. Um, that resolves where the 5 goes in the bottom 3x3 three three box as well. then we can 
we've now got six digits in row six here, so what we need, we need two, three, six into this. There's a six up here. It allows us to place pencil mark sixes over into this position, um, which I don't think is going to give us anything else. What I immediately scanned for there, just so that you know, is I immediately scanned this these three squares. Because if there had been a six here, uh, or here, for example, then it would have uh, locked a six into this side of the grid. And I would have been able to place a six up here. Um, but unfortunately, that's not going to work this time. So we're going to have to think harder. We should probably look at, um, bearing in mind we've got a two and a three and an eight down this side here, uh, we could think about uh, 4, 7, 9. You can see that can be 4 or 7. Ah, there we go, another naked single here. This has to be a 9 because of this 4 and 7. So this puzzle seems to involve a lot of uh, that sort of logic, i.e. just trying to make very good use of the numbers that you've we've given, even if we don't know exactly what the number is, we know their position within the row and the column. We get this 9 here, let's see if we can use it. Uh, no, not easily. What we can do is we can make a pencil mark 7 just like that. this 9 here, it gives us 5 in row 9, so let's just check it, 1, 2, 3, 6, uh, ah, look at that, yes, 2, 3 and 6 in this box already, so the only option left for this square here is a 1, <laughs> uh, which, which that's going to be very useful, in fact that may be the critical step to cracking the puzzle, because that's going to give us this number and this number in this 3x3 three three box. Um, so we can place a 1 in here, and we can place a 7. Uh, let's see what that does for us. Gives us a 7 up here too. Allows us to make some pencil marked 4s because of this 4, which gives us this square must be a 4 up here, which resolves where the 4 goes in this top 3x3 three three box. Oops. And I'm looking at this 6 here, look, that can fix a 6 into one of those two positions, which is really nice. Uh, that forces a 6 here, because remember the 6 is in either of this position and this position, so place the 6 up here now, and we have to fill 1 and 3 into these two positions, so that can only be in this order. I think we're making very good progress, finally. Um, so, let's come across here, we can place a 3 into these two positions, one into these two positions. This, uh, what are we looking at here? Seven, nine. Can't quite see which order that's happening in, in, to, in terms of these two cells here. And in fact, if we look at this arrangement here in this three, we can make a pencil mark we made up a while ago, I think. Let's see if that helps us with this three here. Yes, it does. We can now place a three into one of those two positions in this top three by three box, which allows us to find this three down here. Let's fill that in and see if that's going to. So now the 3 in this box is pushed over onto the into column 6. And we can now finish row 3. Look, we've got to place a 2 and a 6 here, but this can, 
cannot take a 2. So that must be a 6, which means we can place a 6 here and here. That and we need to place six up here, two here, which means that this cell has to be a two. Now, remembering that's a two here, that means this cell has to be a two, and look what's going to happen now. The whole thing's going to start to chain. Two, six, three, four, four. Three can only go here now in terms of this position. This has to be a 9. And it, one of the things you have to sort of guard against at this stage of solving a puzzle like this is um, you can go a bit quickly. Um, and if you do that, you sort of, you can often lose key bits of the logic you'd like to have, um, you'd like to have recorded during the solve. Um, so your job now is to try to remember all of those numbers we've just put in and make sure that we uh, we don't forget to use the simple deductions that were possible as a result of them. It has to be an eight, I think. Five, three, one, nine, okay. We're very close now to finishing the puzzle. Uh, this has to be a one, I think. This has to be a 9. Can we move this 6 here, which is this is a 2 or a 3, that has to be a 2. That means we can finish off the central column, finish off this bottom left hand 3x3 three three box. It's got to be a 7. Forces a seven here that finishes this box. And what have we got left for here? Three and eight. So that's going to be a three and that's going to be an eight. So that's another super fiendish done. Hope a useful run through. And we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.